In June 2011, DuPont announced plans to transition Tyvek 1073B and 1059B to manufacturing lines that use our latest flash spinning technology. Since then, we have made significant progress in creating materials on our newer lines and have data demonstrating evidence of functional equivalence. We've also expanded the scope of the project beyond the US FDA transition protocol to include additional testing requested by the industry to support risk assessments. And we have added milestones to the timeline, which are highlighted in yellow. Known as the Medical Packaging Transition Project, or MPTP for short, this project includes the US FDA Transition Protocol, Phantom Protocol, and formal DuPont product stewardship process. The MPTP is a top priority for DuPont. We have a team of people around the world working on this project, and DuPont will be investing more than $30 million to help make this transition process seamless for you and the healthcare industry. This is truly a collaborative effort. We've been working with global sterile packaging manufacturers, medical device manufacturers, regulatory authorities, testing laboratories, and contract sterilizers to ensure that critical requirements are being addressed. So the industry will be able to use current process and converting parameters with Tyvek produced using our latest flash spinning technology. And as we continue working on this complex multi-year project, the number of collaborators will grow. A lot has happened since we first announced the transition last summer. Today, I will share some data we have to date, tell you a little bit about the Phantom Protocol and product stewardship, and provide a snapshot of MPTP cell selection. You can find additional details and data on our website. Data from developmental material testing demonstrates evidence of functional equivalence. Looking at these bar graphs, you can see that there is little difference between the values for current Tyvek 1073B and those for developmental material. The same can be said for current Tyvek 1059B and developmental material, as you can see here. And it's not just material properties that demonstrate evidence of functional equivalence. In a pouch seal strength comparison, the 1073B developmental materials perform virtually the same as current materials for the time and temperature sealing windows shown as these fingerprints clearly indicate. When we compare the seal strength of blister packs, some of the 1059B developmental materials had slightly higher seal strengths than current materials, but are still functionally equivalent. This is an area of further development. Now I'd like to tell you about the Phantom Protocol. We defined and initiated this component of the MPTP to conduct additional testing of applications and technologies that are outside the scope of the transition protocol, but have been requested by the industry to support risk assessments. The Phantom Protocol includes things such as additional sterilization methods, package testing beyond five-year aging, and studies of the effect of sterilization and aging on mechanical and microbial barrier properties. Here's a look at some of the results from those studies comparing developmental materials to current materials. As you can see, the results again demonstrate little difference. I want to remind you that the data and summaries you are seeing in this video are merely a snapshot of the information that can be found on our website. Now, let's take a look at the third component of the MPTP, product stewardship. Every DuPont product that is commercialized requires a formal DuPont product stewardship study to assess product risk and fitness for use. For this project, the study will include tests that are important to the medical device industry, such as cytotoxicity and bioburden. Finally, I'd like to provide a brief look at the demographics behind the cell matrices for the transition protocol and phantom protocol. There are 48 medical device manufacturers from around the world participating in this project, representing a variety of different packaging configurations, film and tray types, coatings and coating methodologies, package size extremes, and sterilization methods, collectively reflecting how Tyvek is used in the industry. Amendments to the transition protocol have been made and accepted by CDRH at the US FDA. In Europe, we've already received guidance from four prominent notified bodies, BSI, SGS, 
two of Rhineland and two of Sud. In Japan, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare enlisted the Japan Medical Devices Manufacturers Association to work with us to assess transition protocol materials and provide guidance for medical devices sold in the Japanese market. In China, we are working with the SFDA Janan Quality Supervision and Inspection Center for Medical Devices, which has performed material property testing on current product as part one of a two-part study. In part two, Janan will repeat the study using transition protocol materials and provide a report indicating functional equivalence. This lab will be testing materials only, not packages. Looking now at the project timeline, I want to highlight some key milestones. In phase four, package creation, sterilization, and data generation will begin. In phase five, we'll submit a report to the US FDA and expect the FDA to affirm functional equivalence. In phase six, we'll publish an executive summary of package evaluation. We'll also conduct a full commercial launch, which Roseanne will talk about in a moment. The rest of phases six, seven, and eight are all about aging studies, data generation, and report submissions. Looking ahead to commercialization, controlled sales of transition protocol materials to medical device manufacturers who want to conduct internal testing or independent requalification efforts will begin after the transition protocol package creation. The full commercial launch of transition protocol materials will begin after regulatory affirmation of functional equivalence. I encourage you to visit our website to see the project timeline and other important documents that we have posted to help you stay informed. If you have not already signed up to receive communications from us, please take a minute to do so. That way we can notify you when updates are available. Thank you for your business, your continued support, and your confidence in DuPont.